Many thanks for joining us on the news at this time. We we'll begin with images of unbelievable scenes at the Federal High Court in Abuja, where operatives from the Department of State Services interrupted proceedings as Omoyele Shore represented himself before Justice Ijeo Maujuku. Now, the judge had issued an ultimatum compelling the DSS to release Mr. Shore and Olawale Bakari from their custody and fine them 100,000 naira. Less than 24 hours after his release, his, they, this happened. All right, now these are pictures from the courtroom when men of the DSS pinned Mr. Shore down in what appeared to be a, a chokehold. Now, they were trying to forcibly remove him from the court. And that picture has gone viral now. And we have our correspondent now joining us, Celestina Ira, who was at the court when these developments play, played out today. Celestina, it's good to have you join me right now. Can you walk us through what really, how, how it happened and what happened in court today in precise terms? Mike, I must say, today will go down in history in the record of the Nigerian judiciary. What happened today has never been seen in my years of experience in covering the judiciary, which involves the various courts in the FCT and in Abuja in Thai. I have never seen this. It has never happened before. The yes, go ahead. We okay, can hear right you. Now I okay, so you're going to hear a report that I put together, which has to do with all that transpired in courts today. The convener of revolutionary protest, Omoele Showare, has again been arrested by the Department of Security Service. The court had adjourned proceedings after giving a 24-hour ultimatum to the DSS to release Mr. Showare and award him a cost of 100,000 naira against them. At the resumed seating, the prosecutor had informed the court that the order given was obeyed and the fine paid to the defendant. Counsel to Mr. Showare, Femi Falano, acknowledged that Mr. Showare was released to him by the DSS. The prosecutor then moved for an adjournment to enable him to serve the witness's statement to the defense counsel. The court adjourned proceedings to 11th and 10th February 2020 for continuation of trial. <laughs> Trouble started when the defendants were about leaving the courtroom. They were approached by operatives of the DSS who demanded that they should accompany him. These did not go down well with friends and family members of Mr. Showare who were present in court. They resisted the operatives and this led the trial judge, Justice Ijama Ojuku, leaving the courtroom. and Bakare yesterday, the 5th of December, 2019. No, but they are being rearrested now. No, 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 no. They are being rearrested. So you don't... But you have assured the court they won't be arrested. Can we talk to your colleague? This morning, I saw a bunch of lumpen elements sponsored by the government by the state security service to demonstrate in the premises of the court against Mrs. Shore and Bakari. From that moment, I did some investigation and I got information while I was in the court that a new charge was going to be filed and that the Director General of the State Security Service had ordered that Mr. Shore be abducted in the premises of the court. 
and that is what is already going on. Please, can you walk out? This is it. You cannot arrest in the premises of the court. I'm trying to abduct me because it failed to assassinate me inside the court room. Yes, they and now I'm with my lawyer. So you're hoping to drive out with your lawyer now? We are driving out, but we don't know how we got out of here. But the late Nigerians are not scared. After the commotion during the attempted arrest, the DS officials allowed Mr. Showare to be driven to their office by his lawyer, Femi Falana, under armed escorts. No reason has been given for the rearrest. All right, that was how uh, we, we see that report. Celestina is still with us in there. Yes, Mike, that's the summary of what transpired in court today between the DSS and Omoyele Showore and also the, his co-accused, Alawale Bakari. All right, now, uh, uh, from comments we've heard so far, this takes us back to the days of the military in Nigeria where a lot of Nigerians went through a lot to ensure that uh, we don't go back uh, to that time again. But what have you heard from some lawyers, from senior lawyers who were present and who you have spoken with what have you heard from them and what are they saying concerning this issue? Mike, you see, I would say that the DSS today made history because this has never happened before in the democratic dispensation. You do not desecrate the temple of justice. The judiciary is not the last hope of the common man. Yes, we know they have others, they have warrants to arrest and investigate, but you don't, you don't do that in the courts. If you can do that in the court, what happens to the common man out there? Okay, fine. They say they are filing charges against Omoyele Showare. Those charges are not being properly filed. Those charges are not yet assigned to any judge in the FCT or in the Federal High Court. So why release him in the first instance if their plan was to rearrest him in the courtroom, thereby chasing Justice Jemma Ujuku out of her court? She was escorted out of her court by her oddly just to prevent her from getting involved in this drama that played out in court today. You could see that family and friend of Omoyele Showare, they were uh, uh, standing as a resistance between Eshoware and the DSS. It brings together the rule of law and checks and balances. Yes, yeah, these persons have to be accountable. We know they are under the executive, but at least the rule of law must always prevail in a democratic dispensation. Lawyers have come out to condemn it. Senior advocates have come out to condemn it. This is not the way to go. The lawyers in this case, the counsels in this case, that of the prosecutor is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Femi Salana is also a senior advocate of Nigeria. They did not even put all these things into consideration or even put the respect of the judge into consideration. They went ahead at at the point, even cock a gun in the court. It has never happened before, and persons have come out to condemn this act. All right, Celestina Hira, our correspondent who was at court today. Thank you for bringing us up to speed on this.